Okay. Uh, we are streaming. <laughs> so, who wants to start with the update? Hi, Griff. Yeah, I can start. Um, I focus these two past days in making the donation through ERC20 tokens. That's working. What I did was I created one random token, a J token, so it works on Robsten. By the that everyone starts testing on a staging, uh, I will try to make a airdrop of that fake token or whatever, uh, so you can try out. Uh, maybe I, I can grab the, the ETH address from the Aragon DAO that we have for give it, and you can start testing with the J token that I created. <laughs> uh, because Robson, I don't have the contracts over there, so yeah. Uh, What's missing for that part and what's currently blocking me is that we need to figure out a way to to mix the total amount of the donations, making a calculation uh, around all the, the currency that the donation was happening and show the, the total amount correctly because so far uh, what it's showing is uh, it's grabbing the, uh, the price as if every ERC20 token is a uh, it is it, so it's uh, a lot of money. But that is not true. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's uh, currently happening. Maybe James, you can help me with that because I, I believe that you implemented that part on the impact graph. Otherwise, I can I can handle it. So yeah, uh, maybe we can use the feathers API to to grab the the prices and, and make the the calculation properly. Uh, and that would be all that's missing for, for it to work. After that, I want to check everything that that, that is missing for the, for the sprint. I haven't checked it real because I've been concentrated on that, but I, I don't think that it's too much compl uh, problematic to, to go on. So, so yeah, I don't, ha I, don't, I don't need to show you the board because it's only that. The, the, the implementation of the multi-token a donation is is just what I focus, so yeah, I don't have to show you anything else. I'll pass it to James. Cool. All right, I'm just trying to share my screen. And yes, so um, yeah, a couple of days ago we put we put live the previous sprint, like all of the urgent issues that we wanted to get live um and yeah that's that's all live there was a there was a small issue or two uh around that uh, that mateo looked after um i can't remember what that was mateo what was that issue again uh the issue was related to i think <laughs> i forgot to fit it it doesn't matter it's fixed now anyway yeah so, yeah so yeah so that's that's live anyway so that's cool so it was nice to go through that process again of putting stuff live getting the practice and uh, making a little mistake here and there and uh, making sure you don't make that again um so otherwise i still have open tickets on this sprint uh they're here in front of me so the server side rendering is uh pretty much like it's done for projects uh, I realized a couple of days ago that it's not done for uh, search results. Um, and that's something I would love to fix. As someone pointed out, when you first load the projects page, you get this projects zero thing, which then blinks and um, gets loaded with the projects when they come up from the server. So it'd be great to get that done for SSR. So I'm working on that at the moment. Um, other than that, there is the status of the, the concept of a project status. And uh, that's pretty much done right now. I looked after that as a part of uh, being able to deactivate uh, a project. So um, the guts of that is done now. Like it's now possible for a project owner to deactivate their project. And um, that was some changes on the impact graph backend. And there's a new button. Uh, on the project page that's deployed on dev right now and i've passed that issue over to mateo 
um, because there's some visual work to do around that, which he kindly agreed to look after, which is why you don't see the ticket in front of me on the board. Um, but yeah, so that's, that should be done pretty soon, I guess. Um, unless, I mean, I don't want to talk for Matteo, but I understand that it will be as part of the sprint um, as it was marked as essential. Uh, I still have the, pro, the build optimization ticket here open. Uh, that's something I haven't worked on like in like a week or more, two maybe. And I'm looking forward to returning to that and finishing it off after I've finished all the other things. There's not really much to do around this, but the build optimization ticket was mostly around, um, it was around server-side rendering and it was before I figured out a better solution. So this build optimization was a lot around speeding up uh, the Netlify build, which is mostly done for quite a while now, as we know. Um, but there's a part of this ticket which would involve uh, triggering a build when a project is uh, created or edited uh, so as to have a server-side rendered version of that project and the search results. So I need to just go in and assess that and see what state it's in, what should be included in the final sprint here, and what should be postponed. Um, so a lot has changed since I looked at that ticket, so it's a bit of a gray area, but I don't anticipate a lot of work in there and the last ticket here as a developer i want to be notified of the errors on the live website yeah i noticed that like um although we have sentry installed right now like i'm not super happy with it uh how it's configured um like the ideal outcome of this ticket for me is that like if there's an error on the live website that we are notified somehow that means that like we either get a notification inside of discord or one of us gets an email or something like this. Uh, but right now we're sending all our errors to Sentry. Uh, I, I need to go in there and like pull it apart and like set it up better essentially. So I today created this concept of a release uh, so that the, um, the different errors are separated by release every time we do a release basically. So when we do a new release, we can see which errors have been introduced in that release and Sentry will do that for us and help us debug uh, those. And it can even help to identify which pull request uh, introduced these errors. So yeah, it can super powerfully work for us if we configure it properly. So I, I would like to, after I've gotten these small tickets that I have left open done, I would like to just focus on this kind of stuff and not introduce any new features at this point and just like really try to um, get the error reporting in, in place and better and notifications and just like be refining things. So um, these are the tickets that are on my radar. There's one more ticket that I couldn't find and put my name on. Uh, it's currently assigned to Mateo. It's this ticket that Ashley got around uploading an image. Um, I did a call with her and I got the files she's using and stuff. And I want to, I essentially want to address that issue also, um, but it's not currently assigned to me because I couldn't find it uh, ahead of the call basically. Um, other than that, after the updates, there's some things I want to talk about around the new Zen Hub stuff, uh, when to do a code freeze, when to test, how we're going to coordinate with going live, and do we need another column in the Zen Hub for the develop environment, or is that a label? Anyway, that's it from me. In the meantime, I pass it to Kai. Thanks. Um, yeah. I noticed there are sprints now in Sanham. Very cool. Um, official sprints. Yeah. We don't have to abuse milestones, but then I wonder what milestones are for. But well, um, so from my side, uh, I don't have any tickets to show for it. Uh, didn't do that much because I, yesterday I was con uh, concerned only half finished, but we'll pull through later. Uh, the token engineering comments got like, oh, so many bridges, 10 or so. And um, I did the little thing where we said uh, we kicked Griff's account from Contentful. So content managers can now use the Wanderer account. Uh, and the Wanderer at giveth.io is like an, e uh, an email address we can use for hot seat sharing of services. Um, it's in the ops channel if you want to um, Anybody wants to look into Contentful, that's where it is. Um, it's an admin account because in our, um, how, how you say it, in our plan, there is only admin account because it's a free plan. So 
um, don't delete anything <laughs> or everything. Don't delete anything. And what else? One little thing. Uh, yeah, I skipped my mind. Um, I do see there are many tickets without a person to do them. Like uh, even many with uh, give it to the future one. And I will take for 70 now. Clear out, wa clean out warnings. I will do that. Uh, yeah, that would be super cool. Yeah. Just to be clear, like th this is um, this is cool and as expected. So essentially, I ordered the backlog column in the order of priority that I think is important, uh -huh. so that like we can just pull from the top basically mm -hmm. as we go. And if anyone wants to look at the backlog and they disagree with the ordering of this and they think something, I actually, honestly, now is the time. If there's something in there that you realize, oh shit, this should have really been going into this final sprint. Like it's like now or never, basically. Um, but generally clean. speaking, from the from, mm. pardon, the code clean. You mean generally mm. the code clean? Well, oh, what I mean is, is like okay. if if for, if for example, like there's something that that there was missed that needs to go in, like we should really know real soon, basically. But otherwise, it would be great if everyone just pulls from the top of the backlog. Mm -hmm. Or if they want to reorder it, they can move it up the backlog and flag it, like maybe with a label or something like this. I will take another easy one, which is show many projects on the home page. <laughs> That's, an That's a great one to do, man. That's a great one to it's do. I will, nice. like, this is like probably, uh, <laughs> it will take me until Sunday. Hello, Marco. It's high impact, man. It's high impact. And I noticed that too, like three projects are a bit... I, um, one thing, because you said you wanted to do a feature stop, one thing I really would like to have very soon, but maybe in the follow-up sprint is the filtering of projects or search, or uh, there are many ways to do this, but, um, we could, you know, uh, filter by tag or filter by keyword, um, especially on the project page or even on the main page, but, um, why why would you like that because it's very hard like uh, even now we we have quite some projects here and um they're probably i'm just gonna be like more. i kind of I, I probably have the like i probably have the same problem that you have right now but i'm not sure that filtering is the answer like i feel like we don't do a good job of separating our different types of projects or something maybe do you know what i mean like, I wonder is like some kind of concept of a category or something like a better, well, not a better, but like an easier way into this or something in terms of like uh, leading the user or the donor down a path, which like incrementally sends them where they want to go or something. Um, you know what I mean? So what about we start with filtering by tags, which are categories in, uh, in, in a broader sense, because these are our categories, I would say. Or do you feel like there should be a meta category like crypto project, ecological project, but you know, then you get into this. I would rather have it like we can also talk about this, but I would rather have it as like a uh, feature by tag, I guess I click health and then I get all the projects that have health Then I click health and education and I get all the projects that match both tags. Yeah. One of the things we could have is uh, when you hover over the projects in the main navigation, we can have like a huge dot down the link all projects and all categories listed. You were dropping off for a second there, or you were like, eh, eh. can you repeat? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, one of the things we could additionally to the search or filtering uh, down below uh, is to have is when you hover over the projects link in the main navigation, we have like a huge drop down with uh, all, all categories actually listed, uh, which basically leads you to the category page uh, and then basically filtered uh, all projects by that category, including a link to view all projects. Right, so like a mega drop down, you mean? Like a mega like the... drop down with all categories that we have. I I can I can mock that up. Uh, we could have that. You um, can go ahead and create an issue right away. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna, cool. I'm gonna so I don't. 
uh, that's one thing. And then, you know, additionally, we can have uh, basic search and filtering as per initial mockups that I created in Figma. So anytime we decide we want to have them, you know, it's just, it's there. Just need to be coded. Cool. I think yeah, now I, is a I good heard... time for design. Sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say, I feel like, um, I, I personally feel like I, pr I prefer the sort of mega drop down, sort of like channel the user into the right direction approach rather than the filtering, uh, sorting kind of stuff. Like for two reasons, like, first of all, it's more user centric. Like, is it like, what is the problem? Let's solve the problem. And I feel also that like the filtering and stuff may be more work. Um, so it may be less low hanging fruit or something like that. So I just I like flat. Yeah, uh, I hear you. I wouldn't limit the uh, options to, you know, for accessing the project. So just limiting to a drop down with a list um, and not having a search or something like that. You know, yeah. uh, deciding yeah. what's going to be first based on, you know, development efforts is something that we will, you will decide or we will decide as a group. Yeah. But eventually we want to have all options available for the user. Cool. So can we have two tickets or an, an epic? No, or I think. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess two tickets. Uh, if there's, if the first or the second one isn't already created, like search functionality and filtering, mm -hmm. the designs uh, are already done. But the first issue with a mega drop down, this needs design, so this yeah. is obviously a new issue. Okay, I'll create that mega drop down issue. Do we have any more updates? By anybody? Yeah. I yeah, I, I just have a quick update for the issue on the showing ga gas price on the crypto donations. So, like, I I, I updated the issue uh, before our call. Instead of uh, showing the processing fee that says only the network fee, uh, I just swapped that wording and said network fee and then put the gas price, uh, the current gas price which uh, I, I believe we can show average, uh, current average on gas now or e station or something like that. A number yeah. nobody wants to see, great. No, it's everybody wants to see that number, but might not like it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's 495. <laughs> wow. So it was a thousand crazy. yesterday, yeah. guys, a thousand. Yeah, was crazy. thousand. That's what I saw, yeah. I don't know and if like, it was true. Like, and and like stretch goal for for the uh, for the gas price, we could eventually include like a minute drop down somewhere, uh, you know, giving the user options to switch between like three uh, options, like you know, slow, fast, or still standard and fast, something like that. I don't know, but that's like that's it's not a deal breaker yeah, right I, now. I think a median is good. Um, I will unassign you though because the yeah. assign is done. So any somebody yeah. else can pick it up. And yeah, um, exactly. The last thing I wanted to highlight you just because I saw it in the new issues. This looks like something for Mitch. Document how to top up with Fiat. Document how to make a donation with MetaMask. Maybe you want to take those, Mitch. Are you muted? You're muted. Oh, okay. I thought it was in Discord. Um, can you give me the issue number? I, I will assign you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So then you want me to document? Um... Well, have a look Sorry. and see what you think, right? Like, I mean, in the case of the top up, like I just, I, I wrote this in the ticket anyway, but essentially I realized that like in Taurus, there's already a top up link. Like, so you can mm -hmm. actually top up your own fiat thing there or whatever. And I did loads of screenshots of like walking through that process or whatever. And I just, I think like with in, in the hands of the right person with enough enthusiasm for it, like we could really make some kind of nice guide of how to donate in Fiat, if that's something we wanted to do. So, I mean, that was the motivation. Have a look at the ticket and see what you think about it. I think it would be cool to be honest. Yeah, sure. Basically the hard work is done, James, but we need to put that on a page will be good. Um, can be a good, uh, how do you call that? Like, uh, trial for you mitch to get into like uh these pictures are big make them smaller or have it nice on the page you can play with layout a bit if you want on the docs page i will sure. assign you yeah. so you find them uh, i think that's it, that's right. it though like uh sorry 
No, uh, I wanted to bring a topic, but it goes out of what we're talking about. A little yeah, bit, so. the next topic. Okay. Next topic is good. Sure. Okay. No, uh, I was checking the, the backlog, and as I got into the the deep hole of the donation flow, I noticed that there is a there is one that is really cool, and I think would bring a lot of value is that uh, being able to make a donation to XDAI. And I also noticed that there are a couple of issues that may be uh, not too complex, but may take a lot of time to make that happen for Sunday. And those are related to media handling on the updates. Like you can share images and videos on making an update for the project. Uh, and updating the the profile picture of the user, uh, those are kind of the same because in the end you end up uploading pictures. So uh, I wanted to ask James if you find that uh, really easy to do and we can handle it by Sunday or we took it out for this sprint and maybe handle it afterwards because I believe that making the donation flow really perfect and, ha and make sure that we handle every possible way of giving out crypto and also making the whole experience of sharing the project and and, and the server side making the experience really great should be the priority for this for this release and maybe handling all of those new features that is uh, uh, put in a video or, or an update could take us time uh, to do it so so I the, wanted to get your opinion on that. So, uh, like, there's two things there. Like, the first thing is that we need to be careful. Like, we on Monday. Are you there? Can you hear me? No. Okay. I okay. Um, okay. So in terms of introducing uh, new things, I would say that like we need to first figure out what, what day we're we going live. And then before that, when are we testing? And then before that, when are we doing a code freeze? And then before that, like, that's what we need to decide first. And then everything comes backwards, right? But that's, that's one chain of thought. Like, that's the chain of thought that, like, we're sticking to our guns. We're saying, no, we're getting something live and we're getting it out the bleeping door, right? So, like, that's the one chain of thought, right? <laughs> like, if we say that this is vital, like, to, to what, you know, like, to, like, the best possible experience for the user or for... Is it something that's going to threaten our reputation if we put out some piece of crap? You know what I mean? Then it's worth like pushing it back, I would say, right? But like we're all in this for the long haul. Like there's more sprints coming in one week, two weeks, et cetera, et cetera. Like I'm most concerned about like really putting out something that's rock solid, like having like reporting in place so that if anything is not rock solid that we know about it, like that's the most important thing and that we have then the ability to fix it, et cetera, right? So um my opinion would be like if we figure out that we're doing a code freeze on on saturday which we could do for example i would suggest that um we we just go in order right like we have a prioritized backlist or back our backlist like this and maybe we want to pri reprioritize because things are low-hanging fruits they're not complex and they bring a lot of value right but we just keep pulling off the top until we hit the code freeze and then we test and it's locked down, it's tested and it goes out. Like, I think it's, that's the way we should do it basically. Wait. But yeah, let's yeah. see what we can do. Like the first thing we need to, we need to figure out where we, what happens when we go live? Like when we press the button, right? Like what, like all fireworks happen, like Twitter can't start booming and banging. Like my feeling is that like this shouldn't probably happen before Wednesday. I don't feel comfortable like doing this on Monday or something. I would like to do it like a code free Saturday or something like this. Get testing done Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, Wednesday, pull the trigger or something like that. Right. So that's I mean, I'm, I'm open, but that's kind of my opinion on how we could do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that was my conclusion because I was feeling that there there was no space for testing by Sunday if we're going to pull the trigger that day uh, yeah. for the many things that haven't been already put out. So yeah. I agree with that. 
cool. So let's go with that plan uh, until we know more, basically. And then we can communicate with everybody on that basis. So code free Saturday, uh, testing Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, probably some more testing, code fixing, whatever, like emergency bugs, and then send it on Friday, on Wednesday, sorry. Yeah. Yes, sounds good. Cool. <laughs> And I'm yeah, so I'm I'm with you there. It should be the the stable version is what we are at, and uh, the features can wait a bit, uh, especially that we almost have everything in there we need. And my bar is a little the the white label. So my bar is like we have the pr the product ready when we are uh, when we say hey this is basically finished. We can now start looking into um, showing it to our. I guess we have two candidates currently who want to have it and that, that that's for me the next bar after MVP. So just so for me, my, that's my meta, how I always thought about it. Cool. Yeah. And so that's Panvala? Is, yeah. Yeah. I think Panvala and Gaia. And Gaia. Yeah. And I yeah, think cool. that, that there are many things that we will do to make the application more powerful that not necessarily have to be in white label. Like, I don't know, uh, the gift bag stuff, for example. Yeah, and like for the white label, like my opinion is that what would work best is if someone does what I did like a couple months ago or something, like someone owns Panvala or something like this, forks it, takes it and does those changes, like not in isolation, but in parallel or something like this. And the rest of us keep moving forward with, with our roadmap, right? Um, I think that would work best, probably same for Gaia or otherwise. Let me just say, I'm, this is something we should debate eventually, but I would hope the white labels get give backs. Well, they might have, they might need a different token function, right? Or they might have they might well, have yeah. a token. The community that uh, likes to fork it might have a token, but they might need different integration into the DEP. That's why I meant that. But yeah. I guess when we near that time, anyway, we should invite them and then talk about features. So to make a roadmap for each of those, basically we fork out big time, and it all also takes me back to the discussion that James started a few weeks ago, where where he said, what are we developing actually? Where do you want to have our, you know, the focus? Is it our own dev or is it the white label or is it actually the campaigns that drive, you know, humanity and the world forward? Like you could go into each, each of those areas and make a full of operation out of it, but we likely have to choose which one we favor at any point. I mean, not, when we were talking white label, we didn't have a token economy. When we we're talking about a lot of these things, we didn't have a token economy. So, I mean, in the end, the it's supposed to be a donor-owned platform. Donors will get give tokens. The donors will be the ones. I I think it will be a little bit more platform-centric, and it it will be more about what donors want than anything else. All right. Yeah. We are. It's a quick one. Any 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 more things? to talk about or do we want to make an, an early one mm. I, I can't think of anything but um it makes me happy if we finish early i think it's great oh, yeah marco I, wanted 40 I made, minutes 40 minutes marco I'm, i made a really quick issue and i just um that's a brand new issue and i don't i, I don't if it's i think it's easy and so i'd love to see it be in in the final Thing. It's basically we want to be able to give retroactive give backs. So we want to be able to easily track the donation amounts in USD. Um, I, I don't know where what we have in the back end, but that's all. I think, that's, I think we have that, Mateo. Or, or you're working on that anyway, Mateo. Yeah, uh, we we need to solve the issue of grabbing the, the current price of each, each donation uh, when we are seeing it. We are indeed right now tracking the every transaction that happened through there. So yeah, yeah that's, cool. that's totally good. 
if if we have every transaction, uh, we're only doing ether. That's enough for me for MVP. So don't let it block anything. Yeah, cool. I think we're recording. Yeah, that's that's yeah. And, that's um, doable. Easy. By the way, Marco picked it up already, Griff, for uh, the designs for that first. Also, or in parallel to what Matteo does for the tokens. Good. Uh, by the mm -hmm. way, last uh, one thing I forgot, I will play around with the uh, database backup, but that is kind of out of the sprint. It should just be there when we, when we're live, so to say. Well, I would like to have it. I mean, if you, where, like, where were those, like, what is the story with those database backups that were appearing on the server? You don't know anything about that? Maybe guy. I did it manually and I forgot because it's from 28 of January and I did so many things. Uh, and I think a manual backup is not hard, so it might be that I just tried out uh, okay. a command I found on the internet. If we don't find out who it was, if it wasn't Amin, was it you, Amin, backing up the database? No. See? Okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's keep a close eye on that. <laughs> All right. Kai, can I raise, raise, uh, raise an issue? <laughs> I don't know why uh, Netlify app of GiveS Beta is working, the, the link, I guess. I mean, uh, but uh, the URL doesn't work. Can you check in right now uh, after the call or anything? Beta so doesn't that, work. Yeah. I can do it right now. Uh, you know, yeah. The Netlify link works. I'm in Netherlands. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> uh, that is not work. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys feel free to leave. I'm gonna check this for Amin. Maybe I can help here. But I will kick the live stream. <laughs> <laughs>